All right, let's go back to that magical date. Okay. That magical date of July 8, 2022. Now, since then, the Dodgers won 25 out of 30 games. I think they're going to be okay. I think they're the the, the I think they're going to win the division. What do you think? You think they're going to win the division? Yeah, they're probably going to win it, yeah. Yeah, I think I think you can go to bet online and put a bet down on that. Uh, by the way, the Mets have won 23 out of 31 games. They're mm. putting the aft thrusters on. The Braves have won uh, 20 out of their next 31 games. So this is a month sample size we're talking about. And some of the teams that already were in position to win uh, have uh, put themselves in a good position. But you go back on July 8th. The Cleveland Guardians were one game under 500. The Baltimore Orioles were three games under 500. Since that date, those two teams have the uh, the Orioles and the Guardians have the best records in the American League since then. Okay, uh, Cleveland's won 21 out of their next 32 games. Baltimore's won 19 out of their next 29 games. So you have these two unlikely teams. Baltimore's, of course, insanely unlikely. Um, I think, I, and you know what? I, I know it's really hard to make acquisitions right now, especially with the, the trade deadline uh, passed. But there's, uh, there's two players that if there's some way, just some way, the Orioles can acquire Trey Mancini from mm. the Astros, he would be a great fit in Baltimore. And I think they need one more reliever. And if they could somehow manage to pry loose Jorge Lopez from the Twins, those would be just two huge pickups. I'm going to say that every day for the rest of the year because the fact that they sold while contending, yes, they got a mess of pitchers. They got five young pitchers that they put into their staff. Who knows? That could be the next uh, you know, Jim Palmer or Mike Mussina. I don't know, but they needed those two players to contend now. I digress. The Cleveland Guardians have done everything right since that day. They've pitched well. They've hit well. Their pitching is firing on just unbelievable cylinders. We saw Justin, uh, Justin Bieber, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a believer. What do you want from me? Uh, you saw Shane Bieber pitch brilliantly on Sunday. Uh, Tristan McKenzie has had some great games recently. You saw mm -hmm. Cal Quantrill has pitched great. Class A is a fantastic reliever to close games out. Um, you know, they have some depth in their bullpen, and they're starting to hit. You know, they I mean. Rosario has got some big hits. Andres Jimenez has got big hits for them. Jose Ramirez, all right, he's no longer on that MVP peak that he was on earlier, but he's still a huge, I mean, he's, he's still a big time run producer. And Stephen Kwan, who everyone kind of, you know, t dismissed his great start as kind of a your main Mercedes fluke, has, you know, he's has a decent batting average and an OPS that's approaching 800. This team can hit with that great pitching. This is exactly the kind I know. I know you say the Mariners are a bigger threat. I, I maybe I'll just scream from the mountaintops, but I keep seeing, geez, this team could pitch and hit, and all they'd have to do is win one game on the road in a division series, and they'd get the other team on the ropes. I'm sorry, I think of them as a threat. You know what, Sully, after looking at the numbers again, you know, running it through my metric system over here one more time, I'm going to I'm gonna concede a little bit on the Guardians. After looking at the numbers, I was like, you know what? This rotation is looking pretty nasty. They got three legit frontline starters that are performing pretty well. Class is one of the best bullpen guys in the league. And you just look up and down their lineup. They're really getting... Um, they're getting really good production from a whole bunch of guys outside of Jose Ramirez, like the Jimenez's, like you mentioned, the Nailers, the Quans. Like, they actually have a bunch of dudes with, like, a 750 to, like, 850 OPS. So, if I had to pick a team, because I've really disrespected the American League Central over the last, basically, since the start of the season, 
I still don't love the Central, but if I did have to pick a team, I think it would be the Guardians because I just don't believe in the Twins at all. I don't like the makeup of their no. town or their rotation or their lineup, so I'm out on the Twins. The White Sox, I think, have just dealt with too many injuries. The Tony La Russa thing has been weird. I just don't like the vibe around the team, and basically I've picked them to be my dark horse at the AL the last two years, and they've burned me both, so I'm out on the on the White Sox as well. So I think the Guardians, if I had to pick a dark horse team out this division, it would be them, and I'm, I will put them on the same level as the Mariners when I'm looking at dark horse teams of the American League because like you said I think you make a great case I think this Guardians team is kind of deep like they might not have a ton of star power outside of like Jose Ramirez but they got just a lot of dudes like Shane Bieber is a star but they just have a lot of just solid major leaguers a lot of dudes so I do like that team up and down um actually a lot the more I look at it I <clears throat> and I don't know if they could take down the team like the Yankees but they did get in a postseason matchup like I kind of like that rotation of the Guardians better than the Yankees with how they're performing in the second half yeah I mean, the Mariners, one of the things that could happen with the Mariners, if they get into a short series, um, you know, first of all, they, these are teams that have to get past that wild card round. Um, and of, of course, that you that would probably you something we have to remember is that the wild card round is probably going to burn a team's one and two pitchers. Mm-hmm. And so you're probably going to get face their unless they p- p- play one of them on short rest, you're probably going to get their number three or four to start game one of the division series. Uh, but, you know, Luis Castillo and Robbie Ray are going to be pitching for Seattle if they make it into the that that uh, wild card round and if they get into the uh, division series. But um, look at Ray, obviously, Cy Young Award winner last year. Some games this year, he looks like a Cy Young Award winner. This Sometimes he looks like me. Mm-hmm. So he's a, he's had an up and down season. But uh, I, you know what? The way it's just the way the Guardians have been winning, and the way that you know they're not going to blow a late lead. And I, I just they, I made this point last week, and I say it again. This is the year I think that there will be a wackadoodle representative from the American League. I think that the Mets or the Dodgers are have to be beaten to, you know, that they're the teams to beat. Um, the Astros are slowly becoming that. But remember, last year, the Rays looked like they were heads and shoulders better than anybody. They were the only 100-win team in the American League, and they beat the tar out of the Red Sox in game one and took a big early lead in game two. And it looked like, you know, Red Sox fans were saying, well, at least they won the wild card game against the Yankees. And uh, I just, you know, a team like the – Rays can be taken down. And I think a team like the Astros can be taken down. Certainly a team like the Yankees can be taken down. So uh, it's just, uh, it's going to be, I mean, it, it, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer in not just Justin Bieber, but in Shane. Okay, there you go. Well, I'll say this. Pretty much after the Houston Astros, I think the Guardians could probably be any team in the American League, including the New York Yankees, because I don't really look at any team like a powerhouse like that, because even when the Yankees were rolling, like even like I didn't love the Yankees team, even though they were rolling, like they were undeniable at that point because of how much they're winning and the margins they're winning by. But when I actually looked at their team on paper, like I didn't love that rotation, like they were getting career guy, uh, career seasons out of guys like Nestor Cortez, Jordan Montgomery, and I like Cortez but I wasn't like a big Montgomery guy. Their lineup after Judge, like it, it wasn't super strong after like Judge and Stan. Guys like Donaldson wasn't really performing at a high level. So I feel like this Yankees remember, team, like they're and Gallo you know, was a hole. Gallo was a yeah. hole in their lineup for a big chunk. But yeah, keep yeah, going, so keep I th- going. yeah, so I think we're actually seeing like natural regression with the Yankees as to why they're coming back to the pack. And I think look like uh, I look at a team like the Guardians, like on paper, like they they just might be straight up better than the New York Yankees. The Yankees as a team were playing better, but individual talent wise, the Guardians might be better. So once we get to the postseason, the individual talent might overcome that team aspect, and the Guardians might actually be a team that rises with the amount of talent that they have once they get to the postseason. So I don't mind them at all because when I look at the American League as a whole, basically any team outside the Houston Astros, the Guardians, I think, could take out. And that includes the Yankees in that. I'm going to throw one last thing about the wild card round. I know it's we got about a month and a half of regular season baseball left before we get to that wild card round. But here's something I would do uh, in terms of how to televise it. And hear me out. Okay. Have them all – I don't even know. They may, they may actually be doing this, and I hope they do, because you'll have two wild card series in the American League and two in the national. So that's four series going on before we have the division series, okay? 
have all four games on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Have them start the same time and have access to all the games. Uh, like have one of them, the, the, the local team, whatever is broadcast locally, but have your access to all the games on your subscription. In fact, do a thing. Say like, if you want to watch all the games on your device, buy a subscription to next year's MLB package. You could do something to rope people in. But have the games not staggered so you have one team playing at 1 in the afternoon and one team playing at 10 o'clock at night. Have them all playing at the same time because imagine the excitement of those games all happening, every one of them at prime time. And, you know, the local fans mainly care about the local games. You and I, we, we're, the, we're the banana boat crazy baseball fans. We want to see all the series. Most people just care about their team. But we're like, oh, we want to see this. Well, buy the package. We're going to buy the package anyway. And so you get to, we get the option to watch the games that we want and have a have a four square screen showing all of them at the same time if we want to go truly, you know, truly off the ledge. But having them, like if you're watching the one team, so, oh, we're going to cut back to see what's happening as the Twins are taking on the Orioles or whatever is happening. Have it all happen at prime time at the same time and have the intelligence to give the access to the fans who want it. That's yeah. My, I think that's, that's you know, I was going to say, I, I think I would need the four box thing or like a red zone type thing where we're cutting back and forth during uh, when games are, um, you know, when there's a crazy highlight, because I think, the the down, yeah, but I think the downside would be knowing baseball, half of those games would probably be blacked out on some channel. So knowing stop, baseball, you, uh, <laughs> stop blackouts altogether. <laughs> That's the issue. You just know if they played four games at once, you wouldn't well, be able that, but, to watch one of them. But but you're buying you're you're buying. You're saying take my money. <laughs> I'm bringing that into it. You if they will make more money by saying okay, you can watch them all simultaneously or watch just watch your team. Um, and then you do all your nonsense for the broadcast if you don't do it. Okay, if you if you just want to watch your local team, like if you're like if you're in uh, you know. If you're in Minneapolis and you only care about the Twins, I just picked a team that I actually don't think is going to make it. If you're in, you know, but like whichever, if you're in Atlanta, you only care about the Braves, then you'll watch the Braves series and see the highlights. Mm -hmm. But if you're a fan of wants to see everything, there's your option. Say, well, it's all about money. I'm giving you money. You are making money. Yeah, I'm pro the idea. I think if any sport needed like a red zone type thing, I mean, it's baseball more than other because we literally have, ten, you know, 10 games a day every single day. And if there was a one central location, because like MLB tonight does it sort of kind of, but if you had just one channel dedicated to watching all the games at one time, if there was any sport that ever needed that, it would be baseball. We have all the games playing every single day. So, Sully, why are you not, you know, in the commissioner's office making these kind of well, decisions? Let's let's get a campaign going. Sully okay. Commissioner. Sully hashtag oh. Sully hashtag Sully Commissioner. I want that. I want that to. I want that to be trending. But yeah, I don't want I, things, Well, yeah. I need to ask you, Sully, because if you want to start campaigns, like you just say, you need a hashtag. Because when you're reading your LinkedIn frame, your LinkedIn ad, I know you said like H hiring frame. I was like, uh, I think that's a hashtag. I, 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 I was reading the copy fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that had I was reading the copy. Yeah, I know, I know. I realized after I said it, so I was, I was trying to tiptoe through the the wet paint. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "H uh, well, frame." I, I, I can't. Like, yeah. How do you stop it? You know what I meant. You all yeah. know what I meant. Just go, just go to LinkedIn slash Lockdown MLB. Okay. Well, guess what? Uh, yeah, you've called me out on not reading the copy properly, but I'm going to call you out to let people know where they can find you. Oh, well, you can follow me on my personal Twitter account, of course, at Creator Thomas 24 My name is Miller Thomas. If you guys didn't already know, that's right there on the YouTube video because, of course, you guys are also subscribe to Lockdown Dimebacks on YouTube. And, of course, on all the podcasting platforms, you can also find the show. And you can find me. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at uh, Lockdown and it'll be pods on Twitter and Instagram. That's the official show handle. And my personal one is right there on my lower third right there. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Being nostalgic for July 8th, 2022, a very different time in baseball than August 15th, 2022. A little more than a month, and a lot of things in baseball have been different. One thing's the same. I'll be doing this every week with Miller Thomas 
of Locked on Diamondbacks. I'm your pal Sully. Let's fist bump and call it a good show. Thanks a lot, buddy. See you next week.